In this video, we're going to talk about a couple of functions that are called singularity functions. They are a little bit oddball in terms of mathematical point of view, but they're very useful in engineering uh, analysis. We will not be using them very much for what we're doing, but if you were to go further into circuit analysis, you will definitely see these quite a bit more. The first is called the Heaviside Step Function, usually denoted as U of T. We can write that in mathematical notation as a piecewise function that is zero if you have a negative time and one if you have a positive time. All it's really saying is it's a function where it's off for any negative value t and then at t equals zero it turns on and it becomes one from then on out. If you don't like it only being one there, you can feel free to multiply this function times a number and it's just gonna be five instead of one there. So you can get whatever value you want as turning on at zero here. Also, if you'd prefer it to turn off at zero, you can take u of negative t. In that case, it's gonna be one if t is negative and zero if t is positive. Drawing a quick graph here. So the u of negative t is just start out at one and then go to zero. Or if you'd prefer not having it turn on or off at zero, but turn on or off at a different time, that's when we do something like u of t minus t zero. And so t zero ends up becoming the switching time of that. So in terms of piecewise functions, u of t, sorry, u of t minus t zero, u of t minus t zero is either zero if t is less than t zero, or one if t is greater than t zero. And so we see here, this is just ways of essentially describing whether something is turned on or off at different times. And obviously that can be useful when we're talking about switches in a circuit, but this is really just an alternative way to describe switching in a circuit. So you could go through this whole part on first order circuits and never need to use the U function by just drawing the circuit with an appropriate switch instead, it's just a different way to write it down and think about the problems. Now, there is one particularly problemsome point about the U of T function, is that if you look at that part where it switches and you try to find the derivative of it right there, it's not gonna work. This is not a differentiable function at zero. The limit does not exist there. However, there is a way to find the derivative anyways. It's a little bit cheating. It's a much more complicated mathematical idea called distributions. However, there is a way to find it and it turns out its derivative looks like this. This is the uh, Dirac delta and then distribution or function. It's not actually a function. And so delta of t it's even weirder than the other one. It's zero for any value of t that's not zero, and it's infinity if t is zero. Now, we are really not going to be using that for the analysis we're doing, but it is going to actually have an important point. This is going to be called the impulse function. It's like if you have suddenly a huge surge of power in a circuit, that's an impulse. This is a mathematical way to kind of describe that. And as I said, it's, it's not something we're using very often. The only main reason why I bring it up right now is this is actually the derivative of u of t. So u prime of t is the delta function here. So these are these two functions. We talk a little bit about them right now, but we really are not gonna use them for very much at this time. 